What's up, fellow movie buffs and film connoisseurs? It's your self-proclaimed cinema showgun here, and I just got back from seeing Spider-Man No Way Home, and I'm going to attempt to do a little non-spoiler review here for you guys who have not gotten a chance to see it yet. That's right, I'm going to attempt to make a non-spoiler review, so you don't have to worry. No spoilers here, but what I will say, this has to be probably the hardest movie to do a non-spoiler review for because literally this whole movie is just spoilers. Like I can't mention that because that's a spoiler. Can't mention this because this is a spoiler. Oh, they don't know about him being in the movie. That's a spoiler. Everything is a freaking spoiler. So it's hard to really find something to touch on here because the movie in itself was full of so much fan service. But fan service done right, like fan service that made sense. So many movies nowadays all point towards like The Last Jedi and, oh God, man, The Rise of Skywalker. There was a lot of fan service in those movies, but it, it didn't wind up working out. It felt like a hollow movie with some fan service and you really didn't care where it went. Whereas in this movie, the fan service works out and you're eating it up. You're not eating it up and going, oh, well, this movie sucks, but at least they got this guy in it. No, you're enjoying it. Because overall, this movie is so enjoyable. It's such a fun movie. If I would define this movie as anything, it's a fun movie. With definitely some emotional, you know, parts thrown in there as well. I will say this is probably the most emotional of all of the Disney Spider-Man movies so far. So it's definitely packs more emotions in there than Spider-Man um, Far From Home and Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm not sure where I will rank this movie yet as far as my favorite Spider-Man movies goes, but I can tell you that it definitely isn't taking the top spot, which is Spider-Man 2 for me, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man 2. That is still the, the pinnacle of Spider-Man movies, if you ask me. So this movie doesn't kick that movie out of the top spot. I can tell you that for sure, but where I, where I would wind up placing it, I'm not sure because there are some things that I had a problem with in this movie. Um, I don't even want to say that I had a problem with. There are things that I would have done different, differently and things that I think could have been done better, but at no time was I watching this movie and like sucking my teeth and upset. I was happy the whole way through. I was entertained and happy and connected with all of the characters. They do a great job with all of the characters. Um, I will say this, if you've been on the fence about Tom Holland as Spider-Man, if you've been one of the people that's kind of been hating on him or you just don't know about him, by the end of this movie, I think he's gonna have you sold. I like Tom Holland as Spider-Man, I really do. But I don't like some of the aspects that Disney has been throwing in you know, to this Spider-Man story because they almost make it like someone else's story. You know, it's not the Spider-Man that I grew up reading. You know, all of this Tony, you know, Stark tech and all of these different things. And it feels like you didn't really get a chance to grow with Spider-Man and Spider-Man because of all this technology and different stuff like that. But you really see some character progression, you know, for Peter in this movie. And like I said, um, when I said it was probably the most, most the most emotional Tom Holland Spider-Man movie yet. Tom Holland definitely brought his A-game when it comes to acting. I mean, some of the scenes when he's crying and getting emotional, it just looks so real. Like, he knocks it out of the park. And I just, I felt, I really felt it. Like, this performance, it was almost like you're not watching a superhero movie. Like, this guy is a good crier. Tom Holland is a good crier. He definitely makes you feel the emotions. and. Like I said, by the end of the movie, if you're not sold on him as Spider-Man, I don't know what to tell you because he sold me. He sold me. I really enjoyed the character progression through the movie. MJ Zendaya, I think she did an awesome job. I liked her more in this movie than I, I would say the past two. Not that I had a problem with her in the past two, but in this movie, she gets to open up more. You know, Spider-Man Homecoming, she didn't really get to talk much, you know, really at all. Spider-Man, you know, No Way Home or Far From Home, she got a little more, you know, she got a little more scenes and you got to flesh out a little bit. But here she's really in her element. Same with Ned. I, Ned was hilarious as always. I really love Ned. Some people complain about Ned. I don't know why, but I really love Ned in these movies. He brings 
the whole just the whole team together. And I will call it a team because in this movie, it really feels like you really get to connect with not just Peter and MJ and Ned on like their individual levels, but you get to feel to feel them as a group. You know, this movie really shines on their friendship a lot. Which is different because, you know, the Spider-Man I grew up with, he had his group of friends as well. But a lot of times he was like a loner, you know? But I can't, I honestly can't even think of Tom Holland's Spider-Man now without like his two sidekicks almost, you know, Zendaya and Ned. Um, they really, I think they did a great job in this movie. Um, there's some characters I'll touch on here because it's a non-spoiler review. But, I mean, you guys know, if you've watched the trailers, if you if you've seen the movie poster, you know Doctor Strange is in the movie. Um, the way they brought Doctor Strange in was a little different. Um, I don't want to dive in too much of the Doctor Strange stuff because I'm trying to stay away from spoilers. But he is in a significant amount of this movie. I will say that he's definitely in a good portion of this movie, but he's not all the way throughout. It's not a movie where... Dang, I don't want to get into spoilers. Oh, man, this is tough. He's in, I'll say that Doctor Strange is in the movie just enough. I'll just put it like that. He doesn't overpower the film. It doesn't feel like a Doctor Strange Spider-Man team-up movie. It feels like a Spider-Man movie with Doctor Strange in it. Now, when we get to the villains, um, hmm, damn, man. It's so, like I said, I don't even know if I could talk about the villains here in the non-spoiler review. I don't, I don't know if I can really talk about any of that. Um, if I'm really not getting into spoilers... So I guess we'll save the villains for the spoiler portion because I'm going to do a whole other video and I'm going to spoil the sh out of this movie. We're going to talk about all of the spoilers, but if you haven't seen the movie, you're not going to want to watch that video. I'm going to let you know that now. I'm definitely going to upload this first and probably about three hours from the time that you're watching this, the actual spoiler review will be up. And hey, who knows when you're watching this, the spoiler review might already be up. So go watch it if you, if you want. But yeah, um... All in all, a fun movie, a fantastic movie. There's some plot holes, there's some problems, but how fun it is, it outshines it. You know, it outshines it. And it's not just me being a fanboy talking. I know back in the past, I could have had my judgment clouded a little bit, you know, when seeing certain movies because just the pure excitement. But I've grown now. I went into this movie with low, lower expectations than I probably normally would have because I'm, I haven't been happy with the MCU lately. I haven't been exactly happy with the MCU for a few of their last outings and TV shows and stuff. Um, I feel like they've really been going like the woke route and it's not been working out for me. But this movie had no trace of wokeness. Like there's no wokeness in this movie. There's no MCU. They aren't trying to like replace Peter with a woman or anything weird like that. Like this movie didn't have any traces of wokeism creeping in it. And I mean, I know that's a small thing to ask for, but man, oh man, I was happy. I was happy with that because I love to just sit down in a movie and turn, you know, turn my brain off to everything that's going on in the outside world. I hate when there's messages creeping in from the real world into our movies. Like sometimes, yeah, like some movies are totally for that. But not Marvel movies, but it seems like that's what they've been trying to do lately. And thankfully, there was none of that here. So no wokeism, none of that. I guess maybe because it's a partial Sony movie as well as Disney. So they didn't allow it here. And that's probably why it's doing so good in the box office. Because people don't want that. I don't want that. And you don't experience this here at all. Um, the pacing of this movie is different than most movies, I will say. It's... I can't even say that it's well paced or I can definitely can't say it's like badly paced. It's just almost like it starts and it never stops. Like it just, you know, some movies like you kind of get the sense of a beginning and a middle and an ending and some movies, you know, you kind of like exciting at first and then it kind of like, you know, goes on a roller coaster and then you get down, then you go up. This is just like, zero to 100 and it never stops like the whole entire movie that it's just going you know it doesn't slow down it doesn't slow down at all but in some movies i think that's a problem in this movie it's not in this movie it actually works out 
And I'm not sure if I'm just saying that. <laughs> like I said, I've just talked about how I, I don't allow my judgment to be clouded by just being a fan of things, but I don't know. This, if any movie can still do it, it's maybe this movie because I know there's problems with this movie that I could point out, but I'm just so happy from the things I saw and the things that went down and the fact that they did, they did a good job. You know, they didn't do perfectly, but they did a good job. They made you care about the characters. They made you like the characters. So even when there were issues, you were still having fun with what you were seeing. You know, some movies aren't able to do that. This movie was able to do that. It, there's things in this movie that you will forgive just because simply you're happy about what you're seeing and they know what fans want to see. Like I said, the pacing of this movie was just, it just, from the moment the movie starts to the end credits, it's just balls to the wall, all type of stuff going on. But it didn't feel jumbled and crazy. Spider-Man 3 and Amazing Spider-Man 2, they both juggled a good bit of characters, albeit not near as many characters are in this movie. And they felt overcrowded, they felt weird, jumbled, and they didn't really work out. This movie, for having so many characters in it, it balanced it well. It definitely balanced it well. There were some characters in the movie who I really wanted to spend more time with that we didn't. But the time you got to spend with them was definitely fun. Um, so being a movie that had to juggle so many characters, I think it did a, a wonderful job. I think it did a wonderful job. It reminds me, in no way is this movie like the Avengers movies, but the way that they juggled all of those characters over there and the way they juggled all these characters here, it lets you know, it gives you some faith that at the very least, the MCU knows how to handle packed, um, cast, if you will, like, the MCU has gotten to the point where they can handle multiple heroes, multiple villains. They can handle all of that. Like, So I had the confidence going in that it would be a little bit better and wouldn't be as messy as those two Spider-Man movies I just mentioned, simply because the MCU has a history of working with ensemble cast. And it definitely, it wasn't too messy at all. It, it, it all worked out. It all worked out. There was, like I said, there are things that I would have done differently there are some things that I felt like were silly, but in the long run, it worked out and it was fun. And I have way more, there's way more things that I like about this movie than that I dislike about this movie. And even the things that I dislike about this movie, it's like, I would still sit down and watch it again and again and again. It's just like, if I was behind the camera and I was the one writing it, I would have done a little bit more in certain places and I would have maybe went to a few different locations as opposed to where they went in this movie. But all in all, Spider-Man No Way Home is definitely a movie that you're gonna wanna go see in theaters. It's definitely a movie that you're gonna wanna see ASAP. I know spoilers are out there, but in reality, if you're someone who's been in this space and paying attention to this movie and you're just into movies and into the MCU, then you prob probably already know half of the things that were in this movie. Like, all of it's already been spoiled online. That's one thing I will say. I can't imagine how it would feel to go into this movie and to be surprised by everything that was in the movie. There's still some surprises, even for the people who've been paying close attention to all the news and the little spoilers and the set leaks and the photo leaks. There's still some surprises in store for you. But what I will say is, man, I just wish we didn't live in today's world where everything has to be spoiled, where People just feel like they have to know the whole movie before it comes out because, man, there's so many things in this movie that if I didn't know they were going to be in this movie going in, it would have blew my freaking mind. Like, it would have blew my socks off. They would have had to appeal to me out of my seat. Literally. They would have had to peel me out of my chair. I would have just been, oh, like having seizures and stuff because there's so much crazy stuff in this movie but it just sucks that I knew all of it was coming. And I know most of you probably know what I'm talking about, but there were so many things happening in this movie. And it's like, man, if this could have been kept a secret, this would have been insane. But because the internet, because people are the way they are, we knew about a lot of this stuff six, seven months ago, a year ago even, you know? But all in all, awesome movie. I'm not disappointed at all. I'm very, well, there's a couple things I'm disappointed in, but overall, I'm really happy with the movie. 
I'm really happy with it. And I want to know what you guys think. Try not to do no spoilers, but if you have seen the movie, let me know a quick review down below. And if you haven't seen the movie, let me know what you want to see from the movie down in the comments below. But while you're down there, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. And as always, find some time out of your day to go watch a movie.